Today in the news, there's some Zen 3, Renoir, and RDNA 2. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. We're almost a year into the release of their super successful Zen 2 desktop CPU lineup. And of course, as with any products, we're just waiting to hear about the next one, Zen 3. So far, all we've known is really just that AMD has a minimum target to beat for IPC improvement of about 7% every 12 months. Well, according to a post by Ice Universe on the Chinese platform Weibo, AMD is going way beyond that. Now, while Ice Universe is a known leaker, you still need to take that information with a grain of salt. The original post was translated by a retired engineer on Twitter. Essentially, it's some gossip between some engineers at two different OEMs on the upcoming Intel vs AMD fight and the Zen 3 architecture. Apparently, the engineering samples have risen to an alarming level of performance, and judging from current information available on Intel's upcoming products, Ryzen 4000 CPUs for desktops will beat out Intel in power efficiency and performance. I mean, no surprises there really. It kind of goes without saying for power efficiency because, I mean, Intel will still be using 14 nanometers for Rocket Lake S, which is the generation that is supposed to follow Comet Lake S. The only difference is that Rocket Lake S will be a backport of Tiger Lake from 10, apparently, to 14 nanometers. And lastly, in that gossip, it says that AMD calculated a theoretical improvement of 15 to 17 percent in IPC for Zen 3. That is already a ton of performance uplift, especially since the node doesn't really change. But in testing, these engineers say that the performance seemed even better than that. This goes in line with what Forrest Norod said in the past. He said that Zen 2 had an abnormally high IPC uplift, but that Zen 3's IPC gain would be in line with an entirely new architecture. Anyways, once again, grain of salt, but I mean, it does seem achievable from AMD. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Next up, also in AMD news, we got the specs for their top of the line APUs on desktop. In the middle of the week, we had an info dump of the complete desktop APU line, but we didn't know what CPUs were which. Well, now thanks to this image, we can now match the chip to the model number. The 4700G, and yes, it looks like it will be its official name, is the highest end 8 core 16 thread chip, clocked at 3.6 gigahertz base and 4.45 gigahertz boost. I'm pretty sure that the 50 megahertz in there is for uh, precision boost, but anyways, the graphics is 8 compute units clocked at a whopping 2.1 gigahertz. No prices, but I would think that AMD is targeting $350 US or about $460 Canadian for that one. Moving on to the game check of the week, you can now get the premium version of GTA 5 for free on the Epic Store. The store actually crashed for most of Thursday and Friday, so if you tried it then, it probably didn't work. You can probably get it now, like I did a few minutes ago. This offer expires on next Thursday, so get it quickly. Next week is also a mystery free game, although a leaked photo with all of the upcoming free games has popped up. If it is to be believed, the next free mystery game is Civilization VI, followed by Borderlands The Handsome Collection, and the last free mystery game would be uh, in June, and it's Ark Survival Evolved. Speaking of Epic Games, it looks like their Unreal Engine 5 demo gave us a peek at the performance levels of the PS5. So the demo that ran on the PS5 was at 1440p and reached a steady 30 FPS. Considering the level of details present in the scene, it's actually pretty impressive. But a developer from Epic Games China said that the goal was to reach 1440p at 60 FPS. In fact, he blames the fact that it runs at 30 FPS as the reason why they aren't aren't releasing UE5 right now. He then revealed that a laptop running the same demo was able to run it at 40 FPS. The laptop was equipped with a RTX 2080. Basically, it means that in its current state, the PS5's GPU on Unreal Engine 5 is around RX 5700 or 5700 XT levels of performance. Hopefully, it's just that RDNA 2 needs more optimization on their engine, because if it is really around the performance of the RX 5700 XT, it's just not that impressive. 
And that is pretty much it for the news today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>